Hey there, Emily Farber with Leopard Crager Realtors. Thanks for joining me. Today we'll be talking about tips and tricks for first time home buyers. All right. All right, 10 tips and tricks to keep you on the right track. Number one, get yourself a real estate agent. A buyer's agent is going to represent you throughout the transaction. Watch out for your best interest in regards to that transaction and keep your transaction on the straight and narrow. You don't even have to pay for that agent. Did you know that a buyer's agent is paid from the selling side? Number two, I'm sure you've heard this before, but get pre-approved. It is so important. Um, personally, I prefer my buyers to get pre-approved through a local lender. I find local lenders to be more responsive and easier to work with than out-of-state or internet lenders. But whatever the case, a pre-approval letter, which is different than a pre-qualification letter, um, a pre-approval letter is an indication that that lender has gone through your credit and your finances with a fine tooth comb. They have discussed with you what a realistic price range would be. They've given you a limit and they've talked about different loan products and interest rates. In order for you to make an offer on any house that's going to be seriously considered, it has to be accompanied by that pre-approval letter. So don't wait. You might end up a day late and a dollar short if you don't have that pre-approval letter in advance. Keep your money where it is. When you're going through the pre-approval process um, and in the underwriting process, they're going to look at your finances. And if they see a lot of money moving in and moving out, big purchases being made, that's gonna throw up all kinds of red flags. So think consistency, slow and steady. Just leave your money where it is. Don't make any big purchases. Don't open up new lines of credit. Another tip is to understand your market. Real estate is local, so pay close attention to what's happening in your specific area. Go to open houses and get a good handle on what certain price points will buy you. That way, when it comes time for you to be making a decision for yourself, you'll already have a base of knowledge to work off of. Now this one's important. I want you to write out your needs and your wants. They're different, but they're both important. If you have your needs and your wants written out in advance in a tangible form, it's going to help you avoid making emotional decisions. Sometimes you walk into a house and your emotions take over, logic falls out of your ear, and you might end up making a decision that you would regret later. Okay, let's talk about location because it's always all about location. Location is not something you can change. So make sure that that house is within a reasonable distance to work, play, shopping, schools, interstates, all of those things that you interact with and need to do day in and day out ends up being a big deal. But patience is key. The great thing about real estate is that there's always more houses. So if you aren't finding what you want, Give it a little bit, just wait. A lot of times people end up feeling rushed and making a choice that they regret down the road. Um, sort of as a side point of being patient is also be open. Maybe you had an interview with your agent and he or she asked you what style of home you preferred and you said, oh, I love a traditional two story. And you've really only been looking at two stories that agent might see something come along that hits all of your needs and wants except for the style of the house. Be open to looking at other styles. You might just surprise yourself and become the latest, greatest ranch lover out there. All right, I know you're smart, but don't try to outsmart the market. Real estate markets are cyclical. They go up and they go down. If you get too hung up, on the day in and day out changes in the real estate market, you're gonna give yourself analysis paralysis and you'll never be able to make a decision. When you're purchasing a house, my advice to my buyers is to look at it with a five-year game plan. 
If you think you can be in the house for at least five years, you should expect to make money when you sell it. Another tip, don't buy the most expensive house on the block. The reason for this is that you and your purchase of that super expensive fancy swanky house is going to push up the market value of all your neighbors. But if you're the most expensive house on the block, who's gonna give you a boost? And last but not least, get a home inspection. Oh my gosh, it is so important. The home purchase is going to be one of the largest investments in your life if you are an, an average Joe. Don't be foolish and want to skip out on the home inspection. In my local area, we have three main inspections that most people do, home, pest, and radon. That is probably gonna run you between five and $600 for all three inspections, which I know sounds like a lot of money, but when you're looking at it long term, it's not a lot of money. It's a couple hundred bucks. And having the knowledge of um, issues that might be big problems, major mechanical health and safety or structural issues, having the knowledge of items that are going to need to be fixed in the future and maintenance items, it's really important for you to be able to maintain your investment. Hey, one more secret tip. Once you have that pre-approval letter and you've done all the homework, you've figured out your location, your needs and wants, and all those other things we just talked about, don't go buy the very most expensive house you can afford. It's been my experience that people are happier when they're not house poor. Yes, the house is an important, exciting, huge milestone in your life, but there's other things that are important too leave some cash left over for the other good stuff.